Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and welcome back to Mars Lander Delivery Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. In a previous video, I attempted to deliver my Mars Lander over to Mars using this rocket, the Kasei rocket, in two launches. This is the stage that's meant to help push the lander out on a trajectory to Mars, but then the lander has to also do some of the work and also capture around Mars. But I had a problem in that previous video because the stage that was supposed to finish up the Mars transfer burn and then help to capture around Mars was not getting the Delta V that it was supposed to. So that was an unexpected problem and I figured out why we had that problem and that's because the nuclear thermal propulsion engine that we had on that stage was configured for both the KSP interstellar persistent thrust implementation as well as PEKA's warp thrust and they actually ended up consuming double the amount of propellant basically is what was going on and so I removed PEKA's warp thrust. I didn't realize that KSP interstellar had configured that particular uh, thermal rocket nozzle for persistent thrust because it's a relatively high thrust thing and normally KSP Interstellar only configures the lower thrust things I think for persistent thrust but or at least I thought that but maybe it's configured everything for it uh, so anyway I removed Pekka's warp thrust and just had the KSP Interstellar implementation on that engine though the near future engine still needed the Pekka plug-in to work and then we had the right amount of propellant consumption and so I'm trying the whole thing out again with this fixed situation with the proper amount of Delta V. So we launched the Fuji stage which is supposed to wait in orbit and help push this out. This is the lander inside the fairing plus its nuclear engine and the Vasmir engines that are from near future. So that's what we've got on this rocket. The rocket, again, has a payload capacity to orbit of 85 tons while reserving enough fuel in the first stage to land on a drone ship. So it is recoverable. I've tested that out in a previous video. I've also tested the lander out in a previous video, so if you want to see that in action. This is basically testing the whole mission. Uh, basically, I've been testing out each individual part and this is meant to be the test of the whole thing. We're sending the lander out first and then we will send the crew to it and the crew will rendezvous with the lander and then land on Mars and then come back is the idea. So here I'm uh, ending the KOS script that was controlling the rocket and we're using RCS to finish up orbit so that the second stage there can deorbit without becoming space junk. Of course it has a controller in it and could deorbit itself later too, but might as well use as much fuel as possible from it right now. So there's a completing orbit and then the whole matter of the rendezvous which doesn't take as long as the previous time because having this stage here first uh, helped out in the planning and so they meet up and here is the docking. So on the lander side we have a small nuclear engine that is KSP Interstellar configured. On the Fuji side we have the larger nuclear engine. Also it has the Hydrolox OMS engines which get 64 kilonewtons. The larger nuclear engine on the Fuji stage is 111 kilonewtons. Still fairly low in thrust. Everything is fairly low in thrust. Some things are more exceptionally low in thrust than others. The Fuji stage is a one hour stage like this and we use it for all but about a thousand meters per second of the transfer but that leaves it in earth orbit and it still has about 2300 meters per second so that it can come back down to a low earth orbit and then get refueled and push another payload out. That's the principle anyway. Uh, so it hangs out and gets reused while this continues on. I tried replotting but I wasn't satisfied with the delta V figure that we had there. We should only be needing 1,100. Well that's not true uh, because this is going to take many trips around because now we're using the tiny nuclear engine and this has a 9 hour burn time. So yeah we're going to take a few trips around but at least it's getting the right delta V 
and so I don't have to rely on the vast mirrors to get to escape. So we do get to escape actually only after two orbits I think. Uh, you can see we've been in orbit for five days total at this point. And then I plot for the Vasimir burn to finish it off, but actually we'll be using the NTP, the nuclear engine, still. The nuclear engine uses the liquid hydrogen propellant, and then the Vasimir uses the argon gas in this case. There is a version of Vasimir that uses hydrogen, and that'd be more efficient. It'd be less thrust. And considering our stage time is currently 29 days with the Vasimir engines, I didn't think that having the Vasimirs use the liquid hydrogen as well would be a good idea in this case. Fine for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, etc. Uh, those are further out and we don't have to do the burns quite as quickly. But for Mars, we generally have to figure it out a little bit quicker. Mars SOI is about two days worth, uh, unless you've slowed down ahead of time. Whereas the gas giants, when you're going through their SOI, you've got a lot of time. So anyway, as it turns out, I have to do a whole lot more than originally planned, but that's how it always is with these electric engines. Because you're getting further away from the planet, you get less Oberth effect, and you end up needing more Delta V. Also, there tends to be a radial, unplanned radial component, but we eventually get our encounter with Mars after spending thousands of meters per second with the Vasimir, and we still have enough to do the capture, which is what's important. We have plenty to spare to make sure that we capture and get into a nice orbit around Mars to wait for the crew. So here we are doing the burn ahead of time outside of Mars SOI because again we wouldn't have enough time inside Mars SOI so we have to start outside first and then after we slow down it only takes a small amount to capture. Here I realized belatedly that I was going around the wrong way around Mars so here I have to flip it around unfortunately. Uh, we're still outside of Mars SOI so that takes about 80 meters per second ish and then we approach while slowing down. You can see the throttle is up. So all this is reliant on being able to use thrust during time warp and of course that's the name of the game with the electric engines but in this case I've even made it necessary for the nuclear engines because I've made them so small. But yeah, it ends up being a good deal overall. It means fewer launches than would otherwise be necessary and of course NASA could do this uh, Vasimir and NTPs are things that have been tested on the ground that haven't been tested in space. In principle, we, it's technology that we have. Of course, at reasonable ISPs, they could use regular ion engines. They just need to have them big and super powered uh, because we need them in the megawatt range in this case. But yeah, they, that's not technically a problem compared to like fusion engines or something like that. Here I'm just correcting the inclination, making sure it's in line with Phobos and Deimos, roughly, and then bringing the orbit down. You'll notice that I also allowed the inclination change to boost our periapsis way up compared to the low periapsis I had before, and that's so that we can do these burns a little bit easier with the Vasimirs, because then we have a longer period of time at periapsis. Ultimately, the periapsis gets closer to the surface as we have here, but I decided it's, good, decided it's good enough to get the apoapsis below Phobos orbit for now and have it hang out like this. So that's where it'll stay until the crew gets here and then we can make further adjustments. So there you have it. We've gotten the lander over to Mars successfully. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.